Well, good evening. It's nice for us to be gathering around the Word of God and preparing our hearts for our prayer time here tonight. I do want to uh, make mention that we had been working uh, for at least a Wednesday or so on the book of Galatians. And as you're probably aware, the coronavirus has uh, interrupted that and uh, change the direction of our devotionals on Wednesday, uh, perhaps uh, for an indefinite time period. So we'll, we'll just see what the Lord has for us uh, in the upcoming days. Well, I'm giving uh, just a few announcements. You can be taking your Bibles and turning to Psalm 46. That's where we're going to be concentrating our efforts for the next uh, several weeks. I don't know if uh, <clears throat> you missed... Uh, our gathering around the Lord's table uh, last Lord's Day, but it was the first day of the week and the first Lord's Day of the month, and that's normally when uh, we have our Lord's uh, table gathering and uh, celebration of that ordinance. And <clears throat> I know I thought about it, and I know I did miss it, and uh, you probably did too. And again, as I mentioned before, I really look, looking forward to that day that we can uh, gather around that table, gather together as the people of God. And Lord willing, uh, that will be sooner than we think, though it will be longer than we desire, I am sure, uh, with that. Uh, also, I think most of us are aware, maybe you're not, that uh, we're in the midst of a week that's commonly called <clears throat> the Passion Week of our Lord. Last Lord's Day was the uh, Roman Catholic celebration that is called Palm Sunday. That's um, the day in which uh, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the fold of a donkey and entered in. They cried, Hosanna. Uh, today, uh, Wednesday of uh, this year, is uh, the Jewish celebration that we call, I bet you already know this, we call it the Passover. And that is the celebration of the deliverance of the nation out of Egypt by the Lord. And uh, the death angel goes through and kills all the firstborn uh, there in the land of Egypt. And this upcoming uh, first day of the week, the Lord's Day, ahead of us <clears throat> is the Roman Catholic celebration that we normally call Easter. And uh, usually that's a big time for churches. And here we are, uh, as it were, uh, in separate locations, exiled, quarantined, uh, away from uh, meeting. And so my plans are for this Lord upcoming Lord's Day is to take uh, our passage in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 through 25. And we're actually going to spend all day in that passage. In the morning, I hope to uh, use that as a backdrop to provide some context and understanding. Try to make that alive for us uh, so that in the afternoon we'll be able to make that application to our relationships in, in the area of submission. So uh, you can be praying for that, looking forward to that. Uh, also today in our church, we have, we have a birthday boy today. And I'm not going to mention his name, but I think we all know who it is. And I just want to say happy birthday to you. And uh, hopefully you're not celebrating it the whole week like uh, normally happens there in that home. So be sure to pray for him on, on his, his, today, his birthday, if you haven't already. And also a little encouragement, our president has uh, made mention that um, in the next seven to 10 days, we're probably going to see uh, some additional surges in the infection, the coronavirus, and uh, hopefully not many, but uh, deaths over these days. Uh, they are saying, and this is the good news, that the modeling uh, is assuming that we're right now at the peak. In fact, New York thinks they're right now at the peak. <clears throat> and they're assuming and predicting that it's going to flatten out and uh, hopefully start in a downward uh, direction. And I want to encourage all of us to really pray for that. 
Um, I think it would be a mistake <clears throat> on the part of anyone, but especially uh, Christian people, to assume that this is going to happen because this is what always happens and this is just a natural uh, thing uh, that occurs. I think that would be a mistake for us to, to do that. And so tonight as we pray, uh, let's make sure that we pray <clears throat> that um, it, it goes even better that the Lord would show mercy uh, to our nation. Uh, with that. And along with that, I do think that we need to pray for our, our, our membership. We have those in our membership that are perhaps a little bit more exposed uh, to this virus than others. Uh, I can think of my wife who works in the medical field uh, there with uh, home care and in and out of homes and these types of things. Uh, we have another person that works as an aide in home care, and they have exposure, potential exposure, uh, to this type of thing. We need to pray for their uh, safety and protection. We don't need to assume that, uh, but really petition the Lord. And then we have uh, another lady in our church who cleans, and so she's out you know, in offices and places and uh, doing that type of thing. And then, of course, in any congregation, our congregation also, <clears throat> we have a good portion of elderly people. And, of course, if they are exposed, they're ones that um, at least our health officials are saying that are really... Um, have the potential for really, really getting sick with it and, of course, potentially dying. And so let's pray for those, and not only in our congregation <clears throat> and in your congregations, but also for all those who are on the front line <clears throat> uh, with this. And um, in my viewpoint, the Lord's been very merciful with this whole situation, uh, even up to this point. And so let's give him gratitude and thankfulness and also pray for uh, these on the front line. All right, let's take our Bibles, and if you haven't already turned there uh, to Psalm 46. I'm going to read the whole psalm, and, but I'm only going to look at a portion of verse 1 tonight for our devotional in preparation for <clears throat> our prayer time uh, there in our homes. Uh, psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth should change and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and though the mountains quake at its swelling pride, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling places of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations made an uproar. The kingdoms tottered. He raised his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come, behold the works of the Lord who has wrought desolations in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots with fire. Cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. What a blessing uh, this psalm is. It speaks of God uh, being our refuge. And what I love about this is <clears throat> that in verse 1, we have God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. And then if you look down in verse 7, you have the Lord of hosts is with us. And then in verse 11, you have the next refrain, the Lord of hosts is what? Is with us. And when I re read that, the Lord of hosts is with us, I, I immediately thought of Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? God with us. 
And so here we have the Lord here being with his people in the midst of uh, the Lord's desolations that he does sometimes in the earth. And so I think, I think we all understand this, that the Lord is the one who sent this plague of virus to the nations of the earth. He's the one that uh, has, has uh, found out uh, our God of health, and he has disturbed those gods and brought us to the place of calling us back to him, calling us to seek him uh, for his face definitely calling us to repentance, right? For our sins and our transgressions, calling us to draw near to him in prayer and to his word, calling us to humble ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Why should we do that? Because he gives grace to the humble. And so all of these and many more, God is doing a great work on the earth a devastating work, but he's also using this for the conformity into Christ for his people and for his church. And so there is, in the midst of sorrow, great joy because we do recognize the work and the hand of the Lord in these types of things. Well, what do we do? Well, we'll notice here in verse 1 what I want to look at here tonight this little bitty phrase, God is our refuge. Now the word refuge here refers to a protective shelter. It's not only a place to hide, okay, and to, to kind of sequester yourself into, it's not only a place to hide, but also a place of security. It's also a place of safety. In fact, the book of Proverbs speaks of that those who fear the Lord will find his refuge. So a person who fears the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom, which is the beginning of knowledge, what do they find in times of crises? What do they find in times of affliction? What do they find in times of trouble? Well, they draw near to the Lord and they find him a refuge. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 26. Jeremiah speaks of the Lord as a refuge when he says that those who flee to the Lord in the day of disaster will find from him no terror, no fear. And so here we have this sequestering ourselves into himself. Isaiah speaks that the Lord's refuge provides, I love this imagery here, shade from the heat of the sun. So you just think here in a few months here in Virginia, we're going to have the humidity and the heat and everything dries out and you go out in that heat and you go out in that sun and sometimes you'll say this, you'll say the heat is just so oppressive. Well, the Lord is our refuge and in the oppression of the heat of trial and affliction or even persecution the lord's refuge provides shade from the heat of the sun and isaiah also says not only that but the lord's refuge is our warmth and dryness i love this from the storm and the rain <laughs> Okay, so you just think, here you are, you're outside, you get caught in the storm, what happens? All that rain comes down, you go back to the house, and you're just soaked through bone and bone. But the Lord is a refuge that in the midst of the rain of affliction or the rain of trouble or the rain of anguish or the rain of worry, if we would go to him and flee to him as our refuge, we would find warmth and dryness so that the storm and the rain don't soak us as it were. And then finally, Isaiah speaks of the Lord being our protective shelter in that he is our shield. He is our shield of defense. He's the one that protects our life. Only thing that can get through that shield into our life are those things that he permits for our good and for his glory. And you think about Job, right? When Satan said to him, hey, you know what? Anybody would serve you because you put a hedge about him. Okay, every believer has that hedge. 
and nothing can enter into that hedge unless the Lord allows it. In fact, if you recall from Job, Satan had to ask permission to enter in through that hedge. And so here we have this shield of defense. Now just think about this, brethren, as we're entering into prayer. We're talking about the Lord being our protective shelter, a place to hide ourselves, a place of safety from the trials and the vanities of life, a place of security where we can, as it were, look out at our enemies because the Lord has prepared a table in the midst of our enemies. Those who fear the Lord, finding their refuge there, to know his shade from the heat of the sun, to know the warmth and dryness from the storm and the rain, to know that that we have a shield in front of us from the fiery darts of the evil one. These are all beautiful illustrations of how the Lord operates within the life of a believer. And of course, there's great fear out there from this plague. And in a sense, it's naturally so, right? Nobody nobody wants to get sick. Nobody wants to end up in the hospital. Nobody wants to be on a ventilator. Nobody wants to die, right? That's, that's natural under the sun of this life. But the fact of the matter is, we're all going to die eventually. So what do we need? Well, whether it be from death or whether it be from disease, we need to know without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord is being a refuge in our lives. Now, this word, this Hebrew word that is translated refuge in Psalm 46 and verse 1, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. That word is used in the book of Psalms in some nine occasions in the Psalms. Now, there's other synonyms that are used in the same frame. You got things like shield, right? That would be a refuge. You got things like uh, stronghold. The Lord is my stronghold. All different types of imagery, but still presenting the same thing, that the Lord uh, is our refuge. <clears throat> and the first one of those, I just want to go through these very quickly since there's only nine of them. If you turn to Psalm uh, 14 and look down at verse 6, it says, you, <clears throat> you would put to shame the counsel of the afflicted but the Lord is his refuge. And this is, this is a protective shelter of God's people from the shame of the wicked. In other words, righteous people are saying, here's the truth, here's the reality of things. Wicked people shame them. They say, look, you believe that kind of stuff. You're just uneducated. You're just backwoods. Nobody believes the Bible anymore. That's outdated. They try to shame us into silence. And yet the Bible says that to those types of people, they run because the Lord is their refuge. He protects us from the shame of the wicked. If you go to Psalm, we just came from there, Psalm 46. And verse 1 again, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. The phrase present help means that he is an eager help. He, he's not reluctant to help us if we seek him and run to him. He's a, he's a very present help in trouble. And so what we have here is a protective shelter from the events of the natural world. And of course you see that, look at verse two. Though the earth should change and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and though the mountains quake at its swelling pride. Right, these are, these are things of the earth, right? It does refer to certain things, but these are the events that happen out in what we would call out in nature, out in this physical world. But also, it is a protective shelter from political world. Look down at verse 8. Come, behold the works of the Lord who has wrought desolations in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth, 
He breaks the bow, cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots with fire. Verse 10, cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among who? The nations. And so our Lord is our refuge and our strength under events of the natural world. You think of the devastation of an earthquake, right? You think of the devastation of a tsunami. You think of the devastation of disease. You think of multitudes, types of desolations. These are just natural, right? But you also have political governments that go to war against each other, that, that impose certain laws upon its people, takes away liberties, does these types of things, oppresses the poor and certain people. Where do we go? Well, the Lord is our protective shelter there. Go over to Psalm 61. Psalm 61. And here again, he speaks of the Lord being our refuge. I love this. It says, Hear my cry, O God. Give heed to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been a refuge for me, a tower of strength against the enemy. And so here we have this protective shelter. Look down at verse 4. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge in the shelter of your what? Of your wings. And so here is this protective shelter that rests under the wings. Well, what wings? Well, the wings of the cherubim, the wings of the ark of God. And folks, what happens when we rest on that shelter? And you remember, under the wings of the seraphim was the mercy seat. When we rest in that shelter, then the result of that is we don't faint. You'll see that in verse 2. From the end of the earth, I call to you, and my heart is what? My heart is faint. And when we find him as our refuge, then he becomes our refuge and our strength. The next psalm, Psalm 62, go down to verse 7. On God, my salvation and my glory rest, the rock of my strength. My refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a what for us? He's a refuge. And so we've had this protective shelter that protects us from the shame of the wicked, from the events of the natural world, from the political world, from the nations, which causes us to rest under the wings of the ark of God so that my faintness is renewed in his strength. And here we have a protective shelter that comes to his people as they trust in him, and not just trust in him, but pours out our heart before him. You know, there's a lot of people who, who, say, who would say to me, oh, I'm making the Lord my refuge. When in reality, when you listen to them talk, the Lord is not their refuge at all. They're going to other things for their refuge. And one of the ways that we know that we're running to other things is because we will not pray. Brethren, people who truly trust, people who truly seek the Lord's refuge, knows what it means to pour out their heart before Him. And that's what we're going to do tonight, right? We're going to go to the Lord and present our petitions to Him. Psalm 71 and verse 7. It says, I have become a marvel to many, for you are my strong refuge. And the interesting thing here, probably speaking of the Messiah, is that this protective shelter begins, now look at verse 6 of Psalm 71, from my what? From my birth. And it extends, look down at verse 9, do not cast me off in the time of my what? My old age. 
So uh, this protective shelter, this Lord being my refuge, extends from the moment of my birth all the way to the failing strength of my old age. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that the Lord doesn't remove his refuge from you just because you're frail and weak and aged? No, all the way from the the womb of youth all the way up to the last days on this earth of our failing bodies. He is our refuge. He is my strong refuge. So my mouth is filled with your praise. Look at Psalm 73 and verse 28. It says, but as for me, the nearness of God is my good. I have made the Lord God my refuge that I may tell of all your works. The Lord is our protective shelter because in doing that, he wants us to behold his goodness. And in beholding his goodness, he desires for us to speak of his goodness to other people. Kind of reminds me of that psalm that says, I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the what? Of the living. And so here is this refuge. And of course, a lot of preachers are speaking on Psalm 91. And in Psalm 91, we have two instances of this. Verse 2, I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Verse 9, for you have made the Lord my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. And so here is this protective shelter that is unto people who dwell and trust the Lord for his help. Okay, I would would say trust in the Lord, period. But I think knowing that we are trusting and petitioning him for his help really brings out the point here. In Psalm 94 and verse 22, but the Lord has been my strength and my God, the rock of my refuge. I love this because when the fears and the cares and the anxieties come in our life, God is our refuge. He is our protective shelter that provides stability for my feet. Have you ever had a circumstance come into your life and it shake you? I mean, really, down in your spirit, there was trembling and quaking. What do you do at that point? Well, you turn to the Lord. You lift up a cry for prayer. And I don't know, I've experienced this, where I felt this trembling and this shaking in my very soul and cried out for help. And it's like somebody just slid a rock right there under my feet. And even though I was still kind of wobbly, okay, I knew that under my feet was that rock of stability. The Lord was there. And then lastly, Psalm 142, as we go further into the books of Psalms, Psalm 142 and verse 6, Give heed to my cry, for I am brought very low. Uh, Excuse me, verse 5. I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. And so here, here's this protective shelter that provides all things I need. You'll notice there in verse 5, I cried out to you, O Lord. You are my refuge. You are my protective shelter my portion, my portion, my material help. You are what I am looking to in the land of the living. And brethren, man looks to all different types of things when he's in a crisis. The Bible speaks of people taking comfort in lies. Can you believe that? that people would actually take comfort in somebody saying a lie to you. I uh, ran marathons for a while back before my knees decided that they were going to take on the land of the aged. And I'm running a marathon, and I'm there at mile 20, mile 21, mile 22. I feel terrible. I look terrible. I'm acting terrible. 
And you know what everybody says to me? You're looking great. You know what the weird thing about that was? That encouraged me, but it was a lie. <laughs> I'm just not looking great. And I was struggling all the way. <clears throat> there, People take comfort in lies, in deceit. People take comfort in money. People take comfort in security in themselves or in their education. Some people take security and comfort and shelter because they have houses and lands. Some people take comfort and look to government. Lots of people in our nation today looking to government, looking to state government, looking to local government to deliver them from this virus. But God's people say, you know what? The Lord is my portion. He's mine, and I'm going to look to him for that protective shelter. And I'm just telling you folks, that if you have him, you have every conceivable help you would ever need. And not only that, but you have every, are you ready for this? You have every inconceivable help you'll ever need. There's a lot of help we're not even aware that we need. And the Lord is our refuge. And folks, as we turn back to close here to Psalm 46, we see here in verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Taking the Lord as our refuge means that we are to believe several things. First of all, that He is eager to help us. A person who really turns to the Lord knows that the Lord is the only one that can help him. And so we turn there. It means that we place our confidence in the Lord. And what I mean by that, our trust in the Lord, what I mean by that is we really believe that He will not only have, not only does he have the ability to deliver us, he will deliver us. And it means that when we believe this, that God is our refuge with our whole heart, that the end result is this, that we humble ourselves to pray to the Lord for his help, right? You can't say, well, the Lord is my refuge and not pray. Those two things go together. So we humble ourselves to pray to the Lord for his help and his favor. And I love this. I just love this. Look at verse 1 again. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Now, what's the next word? Therefore. Therefore, we will not what? We will not fear. In other words, folks, when we really pour out our heart before the Lord, including all of our fears, all of our anxieties, all of our cares, whether they're real or imagined, when we get that settled heart, trusting in the Lord's protective shelter, it will remove active fear from our souls. You know what? There are, there are people... And it really is a sad thing. I struggle with this myself that live their whole lives scared, fearful of tomorrow, fearful of next year, fearful of what may happen in this and what may happen there. Brethren, tomorrow will take care of itself. But today, God is our refuge and it will remove our fears. I can't help but think of this and think of the book of Hebrews. Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 4, <clears throat> it says, Therefore let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help. What? In time of need. And folks, that encouragement isn't just that God is our present uh, protective shelter. Hebrews says another reason to go to God as our refuge is because he is our high priest. That he has entered into the heavens as our priest. That Christ can sympathize with our weaknesses. And one of our weaknesses is we fear. 
He can sympathize with that. So, brethren, tonight, let us draw near to the only one who is our protective shelter. Whether it be the material world, whether it be anxieties, whether it be praying for someone else, praying for yourself, whatever those needs are, and you'll, you've got a whole prayer sheet full of needs and needs that we don't even have there. Let us draw near so that we can find what we really, really need. Grace. Grace of his presence. Grace of his endurance. Grace of his protection. Grace of him being our shield. Grace of his provision. Grace so that we might receive the strength to walk through the trial. Or even this, the grace to watch the trial be removed. Whatever it is, we can go to him as our high priest and receive mercy to help just at the right moment when we need it. Let's pray together. Our Father, thank you for uh, these truths. And our loving Lord, I pray that you would strengthen your people that you would cause our hearts to be gathered together in oneness and in unity. That you might bow your ears down to us in mercies and hear our cries as we pour out our hearts before you. Oh Lord, you have in the past been our refuge. Lord, be our refuge today as we seek your face, may we find that protective shelter from the heat of the day, from the storms of the affliction, and from the constant rains of the things that we deal with in this life. Oh Lord, you are our rock, our strong deliverer. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.